Welcome to my weblog. The topic of this program will be the design and construction of a detached three-car garage that features 900 square feet of living area below the structural concrete parking slab. I will focus on some of the building site issues that influence my design decisions for this sloping lot. I will show you some of the construction details needed to build an engineered concrete parking slab that safely supports the weight of three full-size vehicles. In 2006, I designed and built a custom home with this detached garage in the foothills overlooking Bozeman. The location of this Grandview Heights neighborhood is situated with fantastic views. This relatively steep lot came with some challenges. The design first and foremost needed to address the driveway access and expand the level parking area. I designed both the home and the garage with walkout basement foundations. The backfilled and compacted areas behind these foundations created the necessary level driveway and expanded parking area. I was asked many times why I went to the effort to add living space below the garage. The decision to add living space below was affected by two factors. The first being that with this sloped lot, in order to keep the parking slab at the same elevation as the main house, the downhill foundation frost walls would be in excess of 14 feet high. The other consideration was the large volume and proper compaction of backfill within these foundation walls. The location of this building would require an extensive foundation regardless, so I decided it was worth the extra effort to install full depth basement foundation walls underneath the garage. I modified the design to be basement walkout and engineered the upper parking slab so as there was no doubt about its structural integrity. Once I finished my working drawing design, I hired Staley Engineering from Bozeman to size the steel beams, spec the steel decking that we would pour the slab on, and calculate the size and layout of the rebar. I also retained Staley as special inspectors to verify and document the proper execution of the engineering details. After the excavation was done, we formed and poured the footings in preparation for forming the foundation walls. I have done most of my own concrete foundation work for years but this project was a bit more complex than usual. I have been very lucky to have really good employees, so we tackled this job ourselves. We put slope on the slab by forming a ledge around the top perimeter of the foundation walls. Wedge-shaped 2 by material was attached to the inside top of the foundation forms. We also formed beam pockets to catch the steel I-beams. When we stripped the forms, we had a sloped ledge to nest the steel decking into. After we cleaned and shipped off the rented forms, we prepared for the lower level slab by installing our plumbing and PEX tubing for a hydronic heating system. We also laid down insulation before the pour. Once we poured the lower slab, we were ready for delivery and installation of our steel beams. The beam pockets and perimeter ledge we had formed into the walls made for an easy installation of the steel decking. Our rebar was a grid of number 4 and number 6 at 6 inches on center. With the effort that we were putting into this building, I decided that it would be smart to consult my plumber and install PEX tubing for future hydronic heating into the upper slab as well. We also made a chase above the mechanical room for the bore of the flue and anything else that might need to pass through the floor. Critical components to this foundation are a quality waterproofing membrane and a layer of 2 inch closed cell insulation. This insulation is important in two ways. It will help the concrete walls retain heat in the winter, but also acts to protect the integrity of the waterproofing membrane. Another key component of this foundation will be a properly installed drainage system. 4-inch perforated pipe with holes facing down is carefully placed in a bed of gravel beside the footing and lower than slab level. This continuous drain line daylights at both ends. The entire assembly is contained in filter fabric before backfilling. We also pre-installed separate gutter drains. It's important to note that gutter drains should never be hooked into perimeter foundation drains. Slab pour and finishing went off without a hitch and we finished framing and trimming the building. Our finished detailing was clean and this garage with an apartment slash shop is a nice complement to the main house and a very valuable asset to the new owner. For more information on my design and construction background, go to peterqbrown.com. 
If you have a project that you feel would be interesting subject matter as a how-to video, feel free to contact me. Thanks for watching.